Peace be upon everyone who watched this video. Today, we will be learning about environmental cost management. Before we proceed, I'm gonna explain about the environmental management accounting. It is all about the generation and analysis of both financial and non-financial information in order to support internal environmental management process. Its main focus is to identify and allocate environment-related costs that the company will incur during its process. The major application of EMA are product pricing, budgeting, investment, appraisal, calculating costs and savings of environmental projects. Now, environmental cost management is all about a firm ability to control costs which are associated with the environment. For example, a manufacturing company will not be able to fully prevent pollution in terms of air and water when they are doing their operations. Therefore, to make up for this, they need to provide some actions to correct those mistakes such as cleaning the water or changing the policies or use a clean energy resources. However, all of this method will incur certain costs to the company. Environmental cost management will include the current and future environmental costs that the company might incur. Environmental cost management will give the company a lot of benefits such as save money, save time and competitive advantage. In terms of save money, environmental cost management will help company to get out of trouble in terms of the company responsibilities to the environment. When a company comply with the environmental regulation, they can avoid fine or penalty. It can also help save money in terms of hiring people such as lawyer in order to handle the lawsuit. Save time. The company will not need to deal with additional inspection, write reports or filing out forms if they implement environmental cost management since the main purpose of this management is to comply with the regulations. Furthermore, the company does not need to wait for someone to solve the problem if they are ever charged with a lawsuit. Furthermore, the methods of Go Green is somewhat of a necessity nowadays. Therefore, the company that implement this management will adapt to the changes in policies in an instant. This management can also bring advantage in terms of competition. Since the company can reduce expenses through using the recycle policies or using a conservative energy. Furthermore, they can also focus on creating a greener product than the competitor but at the same time sell at the same price or lower than the competitor due to reduction in cost. Go green policies is becoming a trend, therefore it would have appeal in the eyes of public. Now, let's talk about measuring the social and environmental impact. First and foremost is the social impact. There are four main elements when measuring the impact on social which are inputs, outputs, outcomes, and impacts. Inputs is resources which is invested to make something happen. Outputs are the direct result of the business objectives or goals. Outcome is a change in the people resulting from the activity. Impact is outcome less an estimate of what would have happened anyway. For example, training program. Input is the cost which is required to prepare the appropriate equipment. Outputs is the result of the training program such as then people learn new skills. Outcome is where the trainee use the skill gain to improve their life such as gain more income. The impact is where out of the 10 participants, maybe 2 can get job without the training, but the remaining 8 can only get job because of the training. So the impact measurement is based on them. There are 4 steps in measuring the environmental impact. First, define success. Second, decide what to measure. Third, determine how to measure and value impacts. Three, incorporate environmental measure into decision making. Step 1. Define success. Act as a tool to determine your progress. For example, government imposes strict environmental regulations, so the company goals is to comply and avoid fines. Step 2. Decide what to measure. 
Select appropriate impacts such as materials, water, energy, or etc. Use appropriate measurement. If using materials, use metric ton. If energy use, 5000 GHz of electricity. Step 3. Determine how to measure and value impacts. It has four tools of measurements. First, life cycle analysis. Measure any and all impacts stemming from production, use, and disposal of particular product. Second, environmental footprint. Measure the overall impact of your organization's activities on the natural environment in a single number. Third, ecosystem services valuation. Valuing services provided by the natural environment and or determining how their values will change. Fourth, environmental input output modeling. Measuring flows of business and goods and services based on the formula. Production minus consumption equals to demand. Step 4. Incorporate environmental measures into decision making. First, evaluate if company achieve targets, if company on track to achieve their goals. Second, communicate. Communicate to the stakeholders whether the goals achieve or not, if stakeholders provide better input. Improve. Improve if goals does not achieve great strategies to achieve it. Nowadays, there are many current initiatives in environmental-related management accounting. One of them are pollution prevention and cleaner production. The demand for greener products from the user and the government is increasing, therefore companies need to change their policies to adapt to the new demands. The next initiatives are environmental performance reporting. There are new requirements in the reporting of the company and that is regarding the environmental performance. This is to show what the company is doing to sustain and manage the environment during the year. The third initiative is to ensure compliance with the environmental legislation. Company wants to comply with the rules and regulations set by the environmental legislation in order to avoid fine or penalty and to avoid legal action taken against them. The last initiative is to improve resources efficiency. Environmental management accounting will focus more on how to reduce the costs incurred by the company, thus providing solutions such as recycle or reuse resources that still can be used. Let's talk about Total Quality Management TQM. The definition is to ensure that every single employee is working towards the improvement of work culture processes, services, system, and so on to ensure long-term success. There are four categories in TQM. The four categories are planning fast, doing fast, checking fast, and acting fast. For planning fast, it is the most crucial fast. In this fast, employees have to come up with their problems and queries which need be addressed. They need to come up with the various challenges they face in their day-to-day -day operations and also analyze the problem's root cause. Employees are required to do necessary research and collect relevant data which would help them find solutions to all the problems. For doing fast, in this phase, employees develop a solution for the problems defined in planning fast. Strategies are devised and implemented to overcome the challenges faced by employees. The effectiveness of solution and strategies is also measured in this stage. In checking phase, checking phase is the stage where people actually do a comparison analysis of before and after data to confirm the effectiveness of the processes and measuring the result. In acting phase, employees document their result and prepare themselves to address other problems. Now let's talk about the importance of TQM. The first one is to ensure superior quality products and services. Second, for customer satisfaction which eventually leads to customer loyalty. Third, helps organization to reduce waste and inventory. And last, ensures increased revenues and higher productivity for the organization. There are eight elements towards creating TQM which are First, foundation. On the foundation, there are ethics, integrity, and trust. And second, building bricks. On the building bricks, there are training, teamwork, and leadership. And third, binding mortar. 
which is the communication and the last roof which is the recognition now we talk about the tools in TQM the tools to help employees identify the common problems which are occurring repeatedly and also their root causes and the first one is checklist checklist is the long list of identified problems which need to be addressed helps meet and exceed customer expectations second Pareto chart to help employees to identify the problems prioritize them and also determine their frequency in the system and third histogram this is the graphical representation showing intensity of a particular problem so that's all for the environmental cost management thanks for watching